When one of my patients admitted to telling me a white lie, I wasn't surprised. As a psychologist, I know that therapy is a place to share your secrets, but sometimes it's hard to speak the truth. In new relationships, most of us strive to put our best foot forward. Known as, self-presentation, this tendency can arise whenever we're worried about being evaluated. In therapy, this can lead you to say you're doing well, even when you're not. Or to tell your therapist you never use substances, even though you drink or smoke. Other individuals say they are merely stressed even though getting out of bed feels like a chore. Such mistruths may sound egregious, but dishonesty in therapy isn't a terrible act, nor is it rare. For example, one study of over 500 therapy goers found that over 90% of them had lied to their therapist at least once. Top mistruths included pretending to like the therapist's suggestions, denying feelings of insecurity and minimizing one's suffering. Speaking with a therapist takes courage, and opening up can feel vulnerable. But skirting the truth comes at a cost. Research shows it can make treatment less effective and drive patients to end therapy too soon. I told my patient that her fib wasn't something to be ashamed of, it was something to understand. We needed to figure out what made honesty challenging to begin with. If you're in a similar situation, you're not alone. Here are some common reasons people lie to their therapists and what they can do instead. Whether in therapy or life, we often lie to avoid being criticized. For example, I've counseled many patients with eating disorders who denied overexercising or restricting what they ate. Other examples include censoring your anger or omitting how often you snap at your children. We tend to pair lying with deception, but these fibs aren't intended to snow the therapist. Most often, they're an attempt to avoid judgment. But here's something you should know. A good therapist will never criticize you. Instead, they will help you understand why you fear being judged. For example, family dynamics can play a role. If your caregivers were overly harsh, you may assume everyone will treat you similarly. Or if your parents prized perfection, you may believe anything less as a failure. In one study, over 60% of participants said they had lied to avoid embarrassment. For example, if you believe your thoughts, feelings or actions make you bad, in some way, you'll be less likely to tell anyone, including your therapist, about it. But keep in mind that therapists are like emergency room doctors of mental health. We've heard many stories and helped our patients navigate many crises. What feels embarrassing to you won't upset us. I often temper my patients' fears by addressing them from the get-go. For example, I say, it's normal to feel embarrassed to tell me things, and that's okay. I'm not here to judge you in any way, 